A bada bing bada bam. Welcome to this week's Bacon of Mystery, Bacon of Murder episode. Listen, we're back with another book. It is called Twisted Love, and it is twisted every single neuron inside of my brain, and I'm about to tell you all about it. This book is Twisted Love by Anna Huang. It's a contemporary romance. So I thought. Anna Huang? Yeah. She Chinese? I know. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There shall be no dragons in this one. There <laughs> shall be no 500-year-old furry fae. The furries are not making an appearance in today's video because it's contemporary romance. However, however, this is not a normal episode. Everyone and their mother told me that this is the book to read. That this is where it's at. This is the story of a lifetime. I saw TikTok edits about this book, about Alex Volkov, the main character, the main male lead. And I went in knowing zero jack shit i knew nothing about this story and the way that my mouth was hanging on the jugular on the ground on the floor because of how insane this shit is about to get i knew i was in for a freaking ride when the very first words in the book are <clears throat> he has a heart of ice but for her he'd burn the world okay a bitch, okay? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> the second line reads, Alex Volkov is the devil, blessed with the face of an angel and cursed with a past he can't escape. <laughs> ah! Let me give you a rundown on what's going on. Alex Volkov. You good? <laughs> you good here? <laughs> no, it's just so crazy. It's so crazy. Wait, crazy what's so good. crazy? I'm so <laughs> confused. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Did I miss a chapter? Yeah, no, I feel like I've missed 25 chapters, okay? Because that's literally how the book starts. Now, let me give you a rundown. Alex Volkov is a 27-year-old self-made trillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's dramatic. Wait, wait, wait. I think he's just like a multi-multi-millionaire. Oh, okay. Maybe a billionaire. I don't know. 27 billionaire? That makes 27 sense. 27-year-old millionaire. Maybe billionaire, but also he looks like he could be a contestant on Physical 100 and America's Next Top Model. He's hot. He's rich. He's so insanely built that you could ski down his abs, but he's got the brains of a unicorn tech company founder, which either means he's really smart or really not smart. I don't know. You tell me, okay? He is the romance novel starter pack. He's also a robot. Zero emotions. Nothing phases him. <laughs> Someone could get murdered in broad daylight on the street in front of him and he would just walk over the dead body. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Are they talking about me? <laughs> Jail. <laughs> Okay, he he must also be a marble boy, a crystal girly, because his heart is stone cold. There's only one person in the entire world that could begin to thaw ice daddy's cold, cold heart, and that is Josh Chen, his unexpected best friend from college, who also happens to be the designated boy in today's book. But Alex Volkov, he's not a boy. He's hotter than a New York City subway station in the middle of butt. August. He's richer <laughs> beyond what mere mortals can comprehend. <laughs> He's a genius. Tell me why this book told me his IQ is 160. Like, why is it telling me his IQ? <laughs> he has an IQ of 160 uh. and he will never let himself or you forget it. I think it was mentioned like every other chapter, but he's not a f boy. In fact, Alex Volkov has very strict rules to never let girls get too close to him. Mm. Because lest they want to be on the receiving end of a really bad case of hypothermia, you know, he's just too cold for them. Josh Chen, on the other hand, textbook definition, boy, med school student. He's smart. He knows it. He's hot. He knows it. And he wants to have as many girls in his bedroom as possible, preferably all at the same time. And it is the sheer fact that he's so open about it that makes him... Not that unlikable, okay? Anyway, <laughs> the two of them, they have been best friends since forever. Alex even spent the past eight Thanksgivings with Josh Chen and his family. And since Alex's family, they're all, um... Of course. Yeah, they're all dead. Of you course. Know what I mean? Batman. They're all... <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> they're all murdered. And, like, this book is so crazy. I thought I was picking up a contemporary romance, which it is, you know? And I'm expecting a billionaire boy meets poor girl, wild, kinky, BDSM, smut, dripping off the pages. You cannot read this on public transit. 
And it does have that. But also, why is everybody getting murdered? Like, why are there so many murders in this book? I don't understand. Some of the plot lines are absolutely unhinged. I feel like this book could not pick which type of book it wanted to be. Sometimes I'd be reading and I check the cover. I'm like, wait, am I reading this? <laughs> Did I accidentally pick up a different book? Okay, there are some insane crimes committed against humanity just casually in the span of like three pages. And the writing of this book is so nonchalant. Like the most insane bad shit plot will be taking place and the writing style is that of somebody writing about how they just purchased lemons at the farmer's market does it work it's gonna work for some people okay (laughs) okay it's gonna work really well for some people and it's gonna work medium for other people and it's gonna work really not well for a lot of people okay i thought Uh do you want to know my opinion okay ask me my opinion your opinion please okay so It's not literature, but what smut book is literature, you know what I mean? It's not literature. I was not in the plot. Uh At some points, I found myself reading because of how unhinged it was. Like, I was like, I need to read more because it's so crazy. Uh There's no way it could get crazier. Uh And then it kept getting crazier. Uh (laughs) Okay, Okay, so let's get into it. it. Alex's family is dead. He spends every Thanksgiving with his buddy Josh. Josh's dad, Michael Chen. He's going to become important later. And Ava, which is Josh's little sister sister she's Mm. pertinent to the story she's the sunshine to his mr grumpy she is described in the book as a quote free spirit who never stops seeing the beauty in the world but she also has a traumatic past wait so she she's the main girl yeah bro best friend's little sister of course but also ava has a very traumatic past like alex you know, a lot of childhood trauma going on. Only she can't remember a single thing about her childhood. Her memory of her past shooting blanks. She can't recall a singular memory. What is the story behind this picture of as, of you as a kid? You cannot pay her to remember. She will not remember. So that being said, let's get into Twisted Love. 21-year-old Ava Chen is standing in the pouring rain clutching her phone. Yeah, I mean, no. There's no way that every single Uber and Lyft is no longer in the area. How does that even make sense? It's nighttime, it's pouring rain. But sure enough, she's been standing there, taking cover in the rain, clicking find a ride nonstop for the past 30 minutes. Normally, Ava would think, okay, let's think positive thoughts and try to see the glass half full. But she's late to her older brother Josh's farewell party. And she still hasn't picked up his favorite freaking chocolate cake that he only eats once a year on his birthday. But now he's going to want it because he's about to move to Central America and they don't have his special favorite chocolate cakes there. What city do they live in? uh, Washington, D.C. Okay. Why did I want to say George Washington? (laughs) 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 Which, okay, he's going to Central America, but we don't know which country. So it's like one out of seven, right? It's going to keep me up at night. Like everything is kind of vague in this book. (laughs) I think there's another destination they travel to and they just don't tell you. Okay. Much about the destination. Anyway, one of the seven countries he's going to does not have death by chocolate cake that he loves from the local bakery. So she's got to go pick that up. And oh shit, the rain just keeps coming down. It's even stronger now. And then Ava finally looks up and she realizes, you know what? I think I've seen this film before and I didn't like the ending. The film would be a literal horror movie where a girl gets kidnapped from the middle of the night from a bus stop in the pouring rain and then is never to be seen again. So she's like, I need to be smarter. I need to use my brain cells. She picks up her phone and calls the one person that she does not want to call right now. Josh, her older brother, the one that's moving, the one that loves the chocolate cake. What happened? Well, hello to you too, okay? Why would you think that something happened? You know, we don't do greetings anymore. You never call unless something's wrong. So what happened? Nothing's wrong. Why would you ever? Josh can probably hear the pouring rain coming down. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. I'm a bit stranded. A little bit. But there, there's, there's just no Ubers nearby. So it's not like I'm stranded per se. I'm just waiting for a drive. Jesus, Ava, where the hell are you? She tells him the exact location and he gives her this very long lecture about how she's an hour away from campus, but she argues she's there because she was doing a photo shoot. She's a photographer. She needs to do these things. Photo shoots? Photographer? It's like kind of her job, Josh. Have you heard of that? And immediately, first chapter of the book, I'm already mouth agape.
bitch because tell me why Ava is on the phone with her brother Josh when she hears this is her brother when she hears a soft moaning coming from the other Bruh, end what? a woman's voice Ava is disgusted which like same girl and I have a feeling the author does not have a male sibling because it, ew anyway that's your older brother her eyes are wide are you are you having sex right now she feels like throwing up, but Josh says, technically, no. What does that mean? Like, logistically speaking, you're not? Like, it's complicated? But either way, they hang up, and Josh tells her to sit tight. He's going to have someone pick her what up. What do you mean, technically, no? What the fuck is he <laughs> doing then? <laughs> Technically, other things. Ah, yeah. Oh, my God. He does not tell her who is picking her up, when they're picking her up. Just wait. Okay, that's all he tells her, which is freaking fantastic. She waits what feels like an eternity. And it could be that the girl he was just doing it with is rolling up. It could be a random friend is going to drive up. Josh has a lot of friends. Ava does not. She's the type of girl that likes to sit in the corner at parties, just daydreaming about all the places that she wants to travel in the world, but she'll never get to travel because she has a fear of flying because she has a water phobia. It's called aquaphobia. Now, while Josh, he is the life of the party doing keg stands in the middle of the living room. So yeah, it could be one of his five bajillion friends or his girlfriends or... Or it could be the one person she hoped it would not be. The one person who drives a very loud, very expensive car. An Aston Martin. And uh. right in that moment, a black Aston Martin starts speeding down the road. Only, only mean guys drive cars like that. Well, I don't know, okay? But Ava only knows one person that drives a car like that. And he's not very nice. This is about to be one hell of an hour long car ride in the pouring rain. The car stops right in front of her. The window rolls down and there's a gorgeous man sitting in the driver's seat. Yes, you guessed it. Alex Volkov. Did you know Volkov means like wolf in <laughs> Russian, I think? <laughs> okay. <laughs> get in. He doesn't even look in her direction. He's so rude. It's so hot. Shut up. <laughs> No, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, that's what she's saying? Basically, yeah. Uh. <laughs> what do you mean, shut yeah. up? Are you trying to be rude that it's not? <laughs> 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 she awkwardly gets into the passenger seat and the car is dead silent. He doesn't believe in listening to music. No sweet <laughs> tunes in this man's ears. Gross. Feelings? Emotions? <laughs> music? <laughs> They're just driving in silence. <laughs> Ava naturally feels uncomfortable, so she's trying to break the silence a little bit. Um, thanks for picking me up. It's really sweet of you. No response. In fact, Alex doesn't even glance at her. He's got that oppa driving stance, one hand on the no. steering wheel. Man spreading, cannot be safe for vehicular maneuvering, but he's doing it. Ava tries... She, you know, she, she shifts back in her chair so she's facing the road again and just tries to focus on getting through the rest of this hour-long car ride. It's just so crazy to her how different Alex is from her brother Josh. Personally to her, Alex gives strong asshole vibes. Sure, maybe he had a reason with all of that childhood trauma or whatever that he was went through. I don't know. Josh never told her in detail, but she knows that he doesn't have a family and that's why he spends Thanksgiving with hers. But still, he doesn't have to be such a dick. All Ava knows about the guy after eight years of him being Josh's best friend is his parents are dead. They left him a giant pile of money. He took that pile of money and 4 x it by investing, which he didn't even need it, by the way, because he created a new financial modeling software in high school that made him a multimillionaire before he turned 18. <laughs> Sure, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes sense because his IQ is sitting pretty at 160. He's basically a genius, okay? Now, at the age of 27, he is now COO to one of the most successful real estate development companies in the country. He is, quote, according to the book, a legend. And he knew it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ava, she's a mess, but she's a cute mess. She's working two jobs because her dad, Michael Chen, doesn't want to support a photography career, which is fine. She loves what she does, but she'll she'll take anything, honestly. Graduations, engagement shoots, dog birthday parties, she'll be there. She'll be photographing. Halfway through the car ride, Ava realizes that she forgot about the damn chocolate cake for her brother. She turns to Alex. Wait, she didn't um, buy it? No, she has to go pick it up. Oh. Okay. Um, okay, so look, don't kill me, but we need to make a quick stop. We're already late. 
he really does not like to take his eyes off the road or maybe he doesn't like looking at her. I don't know, ouch. Okay, it's a really small detour for Josh's cake. I'll run in and out before you can even park. It'll be so quick. Please stop. Ava stops. Not only does she stop, but she's staring at his fingers, just gripping the steering wheel and it's doing things to her system. It's raining outside the car and inside the car on her seat. He might be an asshole, but he's gorgeous. He's beautiful. Jade green <laughs> eyes, the color of, you know what that color is? No. Money. He looks like he's been chipped from a glacier. His face is so sharp. He looks like a statue from an Italian museum. Just come to life and walk right out of there, butt naked and straight into Ava's bed. I mean, his car. What is she thinking? Disgusting. And he asks her, if we get to the cage shop, you promise you'll stop talking? Yeah, if you want. Fine. When they get to the bakery, Ava is ready to jump out. Efficiency is key here. But Alex grabs her arm before she can even get out and pushes her back into her seat. If Ava wasn't upset that he was preventing her from leaving the car, she would have made a puddle in that seat. Okay, why is his touch so hot? <laughs> what she, is going on? No, literally, that's what she's telling me. She's telling me. She told me this. Why? She told me this. Oh, you have no idea what this book is about. Honey, this is just smut. Baby, <laughs> baby, you thought you thought there was a plot. <laughs> <laughs> like why? <laughs> what do okay. you mean? All right. Anyways, just, okay. just enjoy the ride. Okay. Just sit back, put your seatbelt on. <laughs> okay. All right. A puddle. A puddle. Got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so good <laughs> like why is this touch so hot she expected it to be cold honestly you can't go out like that what like what she looks down at her t-shirt and jeans well what's left of her t-shirt her white t-shirt is completely transparent and her red lace bra is not doing anything to hide her full chest nips and all ah. and instead of being embarrassed ava chooses to focus on getting the cakes before the shops close Instead of staring at my breast, asshole, why don't you hand me your jacket so I can get the cake? Once Ava realizes that she just called the Alex Volkov an asshole, she's quacking in her boots. But Alex, on the other hand, he's smirking. This is probably the most intense emotional response that she's ever elicited from this man in almost a decade. So there's that. You're not my type, Ava. Even if you weren't my best friend's sister. The way he's <laughs> leaned over so close to her face. I mean, he's practically growling. It's so hot. <laughs> but also kind of mean. I mean, Ava wasn't really interested either, but he doesn't have to be so blunt about it, right? Either way, he doesn't let her out the car, even with his jacket on. So he runs in, grabs the cake, and before you knew it, they're making their way over to Josh's going away party, which happens to be right next to Ava's place. They live right next door to each other, her and her brother. They're house neighbors. When Alex pulls up in the driveway, like a panther, that's how she describes him, okay? That's not me. Like a panther. Everything he does is mysterious and sleek and just like, <laughs> <laughs> like that panther. <sighs> okay. What do you mean? Why do you think I've been so glued to my Kindle recently? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Where's my nose? What are you looking for, your dignity? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> He's like a predator, always on the alert, looking for new prey. Ava turns to him. I hope the stick in your ass punctures a vital organ. <laughs> but because she has manners, she then says, thanks for the ride and leaves the car. And with that, she's running. She's slamming her front door shut. Now, side note, this book is a dual POV. I did not know that. We have Ava's POV and then Alex's POV, which normally uh -oh. I don't like when I know the guy's POV because I don't know. I don't know what's going on in that brain. And I think that's hotter. But once I know, I'm like, oh, that's what's going on in that brain. <laughs> okay, so for example, sometimes my husband be laying there all hot, okay? And he's like running through his hands through his hair. <laughs> and then he'd be leaning down. He'd be like, oh, I'm like, damn, he's probably thinking about, I don't know, stocks or some shit, something hot. I'm like, babe, what are you thinking about? Oh, I'm playing Tetris in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't want to know these things. <laughs> He's laughing because this has happened multiple times. <laughs> okay, so 
at Josh's party. A blonde girl is practically drooling over Alex. He's hot, but once you know he's one of the most financially eligible bachelors in the entire city, he becomes hotter. It's likely the blonde girl knows both of these things about Alex. She's curling her finger around his biceps. We can take this somewhere more private if you want. Alex is smirking. Yeah, no, not in her wildest dreams. He takes one look at her and he already knows she cannot handle him. I mean, despite her sexual aggression, she wants a boyfriend. She wants someone to send her flowers and call her a princess. Alex Volkov does not do that. He has rules. No kissing, no face-to-face -face contact. If one of the girls on his rotating roster suddenly wants those things, they know the drill, they're out and quickly replaced by someone who knows boundaries. It's a simple agreement. So they need to be as big of an asshole as possible. Yeah. Then they need to fall for one girl. And one girl only. One girl only. Yeah. Now that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> that's really hot. <laughs> that's really hot, yeah. yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, Josh is on the couch with two girls offering him a threesome before he leaves for Central America. Josh is what? On the couch with uh -huh. two girls offering him a threesome before uh -huh. he leaves. Okay. As a going away present. Okay. Cool. Before Alex can roll his eyes, he hears a ha 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 ha, a laugh just floating around in the party. And of course, he knows who the laugh belongs to. It belongs to Ava. Josh's little, the grass is always greener on the other side. The glass is always half full. Today's gonna be a great day. Little sister, and happy go lucky, Miss Little Sunshine, Miss Little Always Smiling, little. She's like a Disney princess. Alex almost half expects flowers to start sprouting behind her when she walks around and birds to be chirping around. She farts and it's the Little Mermaid soundtrack. That's what he's expecting, okay? But he can't help but watch her and think, is that a real laugh or is that a fake laugh? Most people's laughs are fake. I mean, he's not judging anyone, but knowing Ava, it's probably a real laugh. <laughs> When I met my husband, I had no idea what a credit score was. I mean, okay, I knew the concept of a credit score. I just had no idea how important it was to have good credit. You can have opportunities to get lower interest rates on loans, like for a car or a home, so it makes sense to build up your credit score. And the easiest way for me to build my credit is by using Chime. The Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card makes it easy to start building credit with everyday purchases and regular on-time payments with no annual fees or interest. You can use the card anywhere where visa cards are accepted so it's really convenient and easy to use and the best part is you're building credit with your own money buying things that you would usually buy anyway and chime members even get free access to a feature called spot me which gives you access to your money sooner if you have a qualifying direct deposit you just have to set up the deposit sign up for spot me and chime will let you overdraft up to 200 dollars you can use any one of their eligible atms and there's over 60,000 of those across the country which you can easily find using the chime app so don't wait to get started. Summer is the perfect time to start building your credit. With Chime's secured credit card, you can improve your credit scores all summer long. Get started today at chime.com slash baking. That's chime.com slash baking. Chime feels like progress. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal and OTC advance fees may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Go to chime.com slash disclosures for details. <music> Later during the party, Josh walks up to Alex. I need to talk to you about Ava. Alex is about to take a sip of his whiskey, but he stops. What about? I'm just really concerned about her, you know? I know she's not like a baby anymore and she can take care of herself, but look what happened tonight. Stranded in the rain, ready to be kidnapped. She's just always been so trusting of the world. Let me guess. Can you look out for her? Ah! <laughs> when I'm gone. <laughs> clutch because yeah basically can you watch out for my baby baby sister no oh. worse than that can you move into my house oh my god and be my little sister's next door uh. neighbor can you just make sure that she doesn't get kidnapped or killed or join a cult or something i would owe you big big time you already owe me big time is that a yes? Because you're the only one that I trust to not... She's 21. 22, actually. 22. Yeah. You do not need a babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to set it up. He's no. Like, what do you mean, though? He does not want them to get... He's, he tells Alex straight up, you're the only one I trust to not try to, you know... And Alex is like, fuck your sister. Jeez, please, please, can we not say it like that? But yeah. 
but she's 22. Like, you don't need, like... Exactly. Okay. I mean, we both know she's not your type, Alex. And even if she was, we've been best friends for eight years. I trust you. Alex does not tell Josh that, yeah, Ava is not his type, but he was also very much enjoying the view in his car with her lacy red bra. I'm just really worried about her, man. Okay, I'm just really worried. I Okay, okay, I will take care of your sister. Don't worry. Alex knows this is a huge mistake because when he promises something, he means it. He's going to take care of Ava. And not just like a, hey, you good text every two weeks that's why he does so well in the business world okay when he says he's gonna destroy someone he does it when he says he will watch over his best friend's little sister he does it the quote in the book reads i wasn't a protector i was a destroyer i broke hearts crushed business opponents and did not care about the aftermath okay (laughs) (laughs) Right after Alex promises to basically adopt Josh's full-grown adult sister, he gets a call. He steps out of the party and it's his uncle Ivan, the CEO of his company. Well, CEO is putting it very loosely. Ivan is the face of the company, but everybody, everyone on Wall Street, everyone in the industry, everyone in the media, they all know it's really Alex running things behind the scenes. I mean, Uncle Ivan isn't bad per se. He's great at being a CEO, but he's no Alex Volkov. And as for why Alex isn't CEO... Himself, you know, for the company he founded, Archer Group. He's kind of preoccupied with something. I mean, the goal he has been chasing since his parents and his little sister were killed. Find the killer and kill them. The ultimate revenge plot. It was the only reason that Alex was still alive. It was his only purpose for the past 16 years. Fucking vengeance. That is the only thing he has been chasing. That is it. It was the only thing that really mattered to him. Destroy the person that destroyed his family. Point blank. He picks up his phone and his uncle's raspy voice is on the other line. Is this a bad time? No, 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 Uncle Ivan. Did you take care of the problem yet? No, not yet, but we're close. You will give your family the peace they deserve soon, my nephew. They agree to meet each other next week after the board meeting because Alex is going to be a bit preoccupied this week. He's going to be moving into Josh's house right next door to Ava Chen, okay? Now, a few days later, Ava is over at Josh's helping him pack up the few remaining pieces of his life before he just moves for God knows how long. And he tells her that a friend is going to be moving into the house while he's gone. He's going to be house sitting. Wait, why would you need a house sitter? Who? Josh is smirking and it's making Ava nervous. Wait, what the hell? And then she hears it before she sees it. Some cars are loud because they have engine problems. Some cars are loud to let everybody on the block know that a rich person is coming through. Two very distinct loud noises. It's the ladder. And it's no freaking way. She runs to the front door and an Aston Martin is pulling into the driveway. Alex gets out and Ava is standing there annoyed. She does not want to be living next to a freaking babysitter. But Ava's best friend slash roommate, Jules. Jules has red hair, an insane body. I mean, her body proportions are so out of this world, people call her Jessica Rabbit. You know Jessica Rabbit? No. Is that a person? It's a cartoon. Oh. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) What do you you mean? What What do you mean? It's a cartoon, okay? So Jessica Rabbit, Jules, is just standing there staring at Alex like she wants to move her bed into his house now. Wait, you're not moving in. You can't move in here. Ava's freaking out. Josh turns to Ava. Why can't he exactly? Because... Because, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 22 years old, Josh. This is freaking ridiculous. What, what, why is she freaking out? I don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, what, I actually don't know. <laughs> you know, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Would I be freaking out? Probably not. (laughs) I'd be like, ooh, (laughs) what's going on? (laughs) Okay. Um, What? I'm confused now. So then Josh is like, it's not about you. He's house sitting. So when I get back next year, the house is still here. (laughs) You're lying and you know it. You asked him to keep an eye on me. I mean, that would be nice if he finds himself with some extra time here, right? Which don't act like I'm crazy after what happened with your ex-boyfriend, Liam. To be fair, Josh is kind of right. Liam cheated on Ava, this is her ex-boyfriend, but is demanding she get back with him. So for the past few months now, he's been blowing up her phone, calling her nonstop, showing up at the gallery that she works at. It's been overwhelming, honestly. Yeah, well, I can take care of Liam. She turns to Alex, pleading. I mean, think about it. 
Like, does he really want to leave his insane DC penthouse to come live uh, here near the college campus? Please just call the moving company. It'll be a cute little joke. Don't you, I don't know, have a job in DC? It's a 20 minute drive. Jules walks up to Alex, swaying her hips. Just so we're clear, I don't mind having you as a neighbor. Do you like to do yard work? I recommend doing it shirtless. It gets really hot out here. All jokes aside, Josh tells Ava, I need to protect you and I can't not protect you. Ava takes one look at him and she knows he's not messing around. There's no convincing him otherwise. This is going to be a very long, uncomfortable year. Red velvet cookies. That's what Ava is going to bring Alex in hopes of softening him up and trying to convince him to just pretend to spend the rest of his time in the house. Just go back to your penthouse. She knocks on his door the next day with a little basket of fresh baked cookies. It's a truce, a peace offering. But why the is she so nervous the door swings open and he's standing there in his suit he just got home from work his blazer is off but his tie is still on and the way that his muscles are straining underneath the dress shirt just <laughs> busting to get out busting. <laughs> <laughs> it's busting to come out of the dress shirt <laughs> damn, damn. <laughs> the monster is about to <laughs> Come out. <laughs> All right. Go on. Here. She shoves the basket in front of his face. I baked them for you. Cookies. Welcome to the neighborhood, I guess. A gift. I know you don't want to be here more than I don't want you to be here, but we can try to get along, I guess, right? Like a truce? I didn't realize we were at war. No, but I'm just... Trying to be nice so we can live easier lives this upcoming year. You know, just, I don't know, eat them, throw them away, give them to your pet snake. I don't care. I don't have a pet snake. But thank you. Ava blinks. Did this man just thank her? He never thanks people. She was honestly expecting him to slam the door shut in her face. She is in such a state of shock. She doesn't move. She's just staring at him. Do you want to come inside or something? This is even weirder. But Ava cannot give up on the chance to see what his house looks like, how he furnished it. Sure. She steps inside behind him and walks straight into the living room. Josh's living room was very cozy. It had a lot of personal touches, books, sports gear, that things that he liked. Wait, wait, wait. He, he renovated the whole house? No, no. He just furnished it. He, he literally furnished it? Yeah. He's house sitting. Like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> he just fucking... Okay. Yeah. No, he needs his, like, restoration hardware furniture. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Alex's place is sterile and cold. Not a single picture, just cold statue artworks placed around. Not a photo guy? Why would I need photos? For memories. I don't need photos for that. The memories are here. He taps the side <laughs> of his head. <laughs> and the echoes. <laughs> <laughs> Empty. <laughs> no, we got it. We got it the first time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we just gotten into you today. <laughs> we got into you today. <laughs> You're kicking your feet. <laughs> this story, I <aren't> yeah. <laughs> Me kicking my feet. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but memories fade. <laughs> Sorry, it's about to get crazy. <laughs> You're so funny today. I can't. I can't get over that. Get over what? It goes. <laughs> because I just imagine every time I go like this, it's just, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> okay, let's go. <clears throat> yeah, but memories fade. At least photos don't. Mine don't. What do you mean? Yes, they do. They're memories. I have hypothemesia, or HSAM <laughs> for short. You have what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Sounds like he has amnesia or something. <laughs> what? <laughs> Highly superior autobiographical memory. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> you have photographic memory? <laughs> it's different. <laughs> it's different. It hit different. 
It's different. People with photographic memory recall details from a scene that they've observed for a short amount of time. They can remember it. People with HSAM, they remember almost every detail about every little thing that has ever happened in their lives. Every memory is solidified and it will never go away. And it's a curse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> Ava is so confused because she's never heard Josh mention this, not even once, and the whole thing sounds straight out of a movie. So you have Alex, who has HSAM that remembers everything and is, and is unable to forget even the darkest moments of his life. And then you have Ava, who remembers basically jack shit about her childhood. She wonders, what is it like to remember everything? Alex leans in. So close that Ava wants to back away. It literally takes everything in her to not run out of this house. His physical presence is overwhelming. First of all, he's huge. But also, there's something about his energy. He takes up the entire room and leaves you suffocating. It's like he's choking you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's like watching your life play out as a movie. Sometimes it's a drama. Other times, it's a horror movie. No romance! <laughs> Alex doesn't break eye contact, but he doesn't respond either. He just lets the question linger so long that Ava feels a droplet of sweat trickle down between her massive titties. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what she said? No, I, I'm like summarizing. Oh, okay. I think they're huge. I think so. That's the vibe I was getting. <laughs> or they're perky, at least. I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> he looks down and he smirks. Go home, Ava. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> Ava runs out of there. Like this is a big heist. She's shaking up, holding her goods. She's running, okay? <laughs> She's a track star. And Alex is busy beating his fist into a face. <laughs> Just another punch. Another punch. And he punches the mannequin straight in the face and sweat drips down his forehead. But he doesn't stop because he's a hot man. Hot men go, ar, ar. You know, they don't stop. No stop. Hot men, no stoppy. Like, I love this book, but at times, this man is giving Giga Chad. <laughs> I'm here for it, but it's giving Chad role-playing as a tech nerd. Alex works out at a local training center, and Ralph, the owner, is his personal instructor. He's this middle-aged man that's really strong at fighting, and he's just teaching Alex how to, I don't know, kill people with his bare hands. Which reminds Alex, it actually might be perfect for Ava to learn some self-defense skills. He's already upgraded her shitty house alarm system. I mean, this would just make things way better. It's a win-win. The more Ava stays out of trouble, the less Alex has to worry about her. And he can focus on his big revenge plan and running one of the most successful businesses to ever be publicly traded on the stock market. Though he probably would not mind her coming over, sweating through her shirt. Boobies just hanging out, baking him red velvet. No. He needs to focus. This is his best friend's little sister he's talking about. <laughs> forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit. When Alex is done working out, he goes to hit the showers. And he's shaking the sweat beads off his hair. And he checks his phone. And he realizes Ava has yet to text him back. It has been an hour. Usually, she's very quick to responding. But this time, nothing. She doesn't even have a scheduled photo shoot. He knows because he runs background checks on all of her clients. So where the hell is she that she can't pick up her freaking phone? He pedals to the meadow all the way back home like that. That's him. Did you hear that? <laughs> okay, he marches right up to her door, right next to his house. He's knocking on the door, trying to get the visual, the memory out of his mind. The blood, the blood was everywhere. It was all over his hands and his clothes, just everywhere. And that could be, that could be Ava if Alex isn't vigilant, if he isn't cautious. He waits for what feels like an eternity until the door slowly opens. I mean, truly, nobody makes Alex wait. But here Alex is, waiting. The door opens, and it's the red-haired roommate, Jules. She opens up the door, and it just agitates him even further. Where is she? I'm sorry, who are you looking for? Ava. She's not answering her phone. I guess she's preoccupied with something. Or perhaps someone. Don't f***ing play games with me, Jules. I know your boss. All it takes from me is one word, and your internship is no more. Um, I don't think that that's appropriate, sir. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's that's giving what is that called in in Korea? The chebos do that to the ah, uh, kapte. Yeah, like you're just abusing your power and status. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I'm gonna expose you. <laughs> I'm gonna expose you. No, actually, that is a very big um criticism that this book receives because the main lead is 
listen, we all love a possessive main lead, but he's possessive to the point of like a little overkill, like right now. Yeah, like yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> It's a lot. Like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Are you threatening me? Are you playing games with me?" They're just staring into each other's eyes, daring the other party to do something. And Jules gives up. She's not in trouble. She's with a friend. She's not someone who likes to be glued to her phone when she's spending time with people. Alex threatened Jules some more with his connections and ability to send one text message, one SMS, and your career is zilch, bitch. Do you get me? Your future career in two seconds gone. Dude, that's not hot. <laughs> yeah, Jules gives in and is willing to tell Alex where Ava is under one condition. She's allowed to go with him wherever she's gonna take him. Okay, and make sure that Ava's okay and Alex is not gonna be a douchebag to her. That's the plan. But no promises there. During the car ride, they're rushing over to some random guy's house. Jules gave Alex the address to, and Jules brings up the idea that maybe, just maybe, Ava is too busy to text because she's having sex right now. To which Alex starts freaking the fork out at even the thought of the suggestion. He makes a mental promise in his head to kill anyone that would even think about touching Ava in front of him. He's seething at the idea that some disgusting little shithead frat boy is going to, or maybe it's her ex-boyfriend, the guy who's trying to weasel his way back into her life. Alex parks the car at the house in question and starts marching inside. Upstairs, they find Ava in the man's bedroom in black lacy lingerie, something you would see on the cover of Playboy, barely covering her butt. Most of her butt just hanging out. The lace reveals more than it covers. Wait, 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 wait! They just break into someone's house. Well, the roommate opened the door, and they just walk straight into a bedroom,、mm -hmm. and she's just laying there with lingerie. Yeah, well, she's standing there. Even her hair, usually it's straight, but right now it's in waves, falling down her back. Her makeup, smoky <laughs> eye, glossy red lips on her golden skin. This is so much worse than sex. Ava is standing there posing while the fucker is taking. Pictures. It's a, it's a boudoir, 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 boudoir. Hold the door. <laughs> What? <gasps> boudoir photo shoot. What is that? A sexy photo shoot? Yes. They're whispering and giggling and laughing while staring at the photos that they took. They're so engrossed in what they're doing, they don't even notice Alex staring at them from the doorway. What the hell is going on here? Ava glances up and immediately starts covering herself up. Alex, what the hell are you doing here? Jules is leaning up against the door, smiling. She's having fun. You look so hot, Ava. I can't wait to see the pictures. Alex shoots her a death glare. Nobody is seeing the pictures. No one. We're leaving. Grab your stuff, Ava. Now. He then turns to the blonde guy with the camera and forces him to delete every single photo, or else. Ava tries to wrestle okay, the is camera. Is this hot or is this questionable? Okay, so, so that was my thing,、uh -huh. where I'm like reading and I'm like, is this hot or is this questionable? I think it would have been hotter. Had the relationship progressed better? Yeah, like I just met you, and、yeah. you're giving stalker. It's just like so unrealistically unhinged. Yeah. Yeah. Nine one one. Nine one one. Wow.、Okay. Like things progress so fast in this book. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. So Ava tries to wrestle the camera out of Alex's hands because he's permanently deleting every single photo, I and mean, clearly it's not working. Alex, the karate man, I don't think so. She's not getting the camera, so she resorts to threatening him. If you don't let me have the camera back right now, I will walk right out that door and I will walk around this neighborhood in this lingerie set. Yeah, try me. If you do, Ava, I will destroy your friend's career until he has no choice but to advertise his work on Craigslist and only get bookings for five dollar neighborhood photo shoots for their children's birthday parties. Is that what you want? The two of them are so close; their faces are just inches apart, and Ava knows Alex would do it, even without encouragement. You're an asshole. Get dressed, Ava. And with that, Alex deletes every single photo that they took. The three of them, Alex, Ava, and Jules, they storm back into the car, and Alex and Ava are pissed. But Jules is enjoying the show. In the car, Ava is protesting the whole way home. She's, I mean, who is this guy? Overprotective, great, right? But who is he to tell her what she can and cannot do? You're not my dad. You're not my brother. What is wrong with you? I'm safe. I wasn't being kidnapped or forced into anything. That doesn't concern you. He's taking photos of you practically nude. It concerns me. Do you know what would happen if he were to leak those? It's badar. It's badwar. It's badu. It's your badu badu photography. It's art. People do this all the time. So what if they get leaked? It's not like I'm doing it on video. How did you even know where the hell I was? 
Oopsie, that might have been me. Jules pops from the back seat. Anyway, it's been two weeks since Alex was put on babysitting duty and he already wants to strangle Ava. And Jules is having a freaking blast with this story. She's adding new details each time. Ava's got a group of girlfriends that she met in college. They're like an oddball mix of friends, but they get along really well. You have Ava, Jules, her bombshell redhead Jessica Rabbit sexy roommate that every guy but Josh and Alex are interested in forking for some reason. Then you have Stella, who's an influencer, and then Bridget, who's a princess. Princess how? Yeah, no. Princess of a small but wealthy European country. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay, but despite being a princess, she's very down to earth, okay? And Jules is telling them the story. (laughs) (laughs) The next one is Wonder Woman. (laughs) And then we got Avengers. (laughs) So Stella and Bridget are disappointed that they weren't there to see Alex freak out. But Ava is stabbing her Greek yogurt with a spoon. Trust me. You didn't miss anything good. It was just humiliating, honestly. But Jules finds it fascinating. But don't you think it's weird? He was so pissed. Yeah, okay. Alex Volkov was pissed. I'm not sure where you're going with this, Jules. Uh, When was the last time you saw Alex pissed or happy or sad? He has no emotions. He's a robot. Stella rolls her Hmm. eyes. He's not a robot. That's a psychopath. Every time you say robot, I'm just like, Beep, beep, pop, pop, beep. (laughs) (laughs) Beep, pop. So cute. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, Stella's like, he's not a robot. He's a little psychopath. Nobody normal has that little feelings. For some strange reason, Ava feels the need to defend him. I mean, he's not that bad once you get to know him the point here is everybody listen up alex shows emotions towards ava nobody else but ava you don't think that's weird i'm just saying this could be fun wait what kind of fun bridget don't egg her on That day at the cafe, the four girls decide Operation Emotion shall commence. A series of phases of tests to make Alex Volkov feel some sort of emotion. To prove that he is not a robot and he has insights. The first phase, sadness. Ava goes over to Alex's house with sad movies to watch with him. Which, side note, she's basically forgiven him for what he did at the friend's photo shoot. She knocks on the door with a copy, a DVD, because she loves DVDs. She's one of those girls. She's got a copy of Marley and Me and a Walk to Remember. How can you not cry at those movies? Ava knocks on the door and he answers, looking scrum deliumptious. He's in the middle of getting ready for a date, about to walk out. But he cancels his date last minute so he can watch movies with Ava! Which, are you kidding me? What about your date? Let me worry about her. They plop down on the couch and Ava turns on Marley and me. Ava can't help but stare at Alex while the movie plays. I mean, the way that his shirt is stretching to contain his broad shoulders. (laughs) The two buttons on his shirt are undone. And just like everything about this man is a Greek god statue. By the the end... (laughs) (laughs) That shirt. It's about Uh, the bust. A bust. (laughs) Okay, by the end of the movie, (laughs) Ava's a puddle of tears. How are you not crying right now? This is like the saddest movie there is. It's fiction, Ava. Ava feels the overwhelming urge to put her hand on his back and rub his back. Basically, his muscles are ripping out of his shirt, Godzilla style, and she's feeling him up. What are you doing? I'm trying to find your control panel, just in case you need a software update or something. (laughs) Where's the switch? It's actually down here. It's actually down here, baby girl. I'd be such a good boy. No, I wouldn't. But maybe. Okay, Alex doesn't laugh, but he grabs her arm and spins her around so that she's on top of him, straddling her his leg. She can feel heat everywhere on her body. She's basically dry humping him, and they're staring into each other's eyes. I don't know how the physics of this twirl worked, but it did. I don't know, okay? I'm not your toy, Ava. Don't try to humanize me either. I'm not a tortured hero from one of your romantic books. You don't know what I'm capable of. And just because your brother asked me to look after you does not mean I can protect you from yourself or your bleeding heart. Uh. Ava's blushing. (laughs) It's just a joke. Why is he taking it so seriously? And the way that he's talking is kind of pissing her off. Like, why does he talk to her? Like, she doesn't even know her own emotions. But before she can even think of something remotely witty to say, he stares at her. I feel you dripping. 
What? Trippy. Ava is shook to the core. She can't even look at this man anymore. She basically lunges, throws her body onto the couch next to him. She can't do it. She can't check to see if there's a wet stain on his leg. But she's just, she's just, ah! Wait, what are he, you saying? He right smirks now? and he says, Sunshine, I'm talking about, he calls her Sunshine. That's her new nickname. I'm talking about your dripping heart. <laughs> I know my husband loves me because he sees my morning face, which is honestly not that cute. I feel like there is an unskippable two hour period between me waking up and me looking <laughs> like a goddess. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Which by the way, this is all a joke. He loves me regardless. It is in our relationship contract that does not exist. But if it did exist, it's in there. In the small print, the fine print, thou shall love me regardless of morning face. And I shall somewhat love you regardless of thou morning breath even exchange. Regardless, I did finally find that it's because when I wake up in the morning, my eyes look really dull before I'm fully awake. And I found a way to fix it, especially if I have meetings, especially if I have to go out and run errands. I don't know if you can tell on camera because it's really subtle, but I am wearing my new favorite eye product. It's the Brilliant Eye Brightener from Thrive Cosmetics. It's slightly shimmery. It's like the end of the night. It's like midnight. So I've been wearing this all day. And the fact that I still get compliments at the end of the night, I use it as an eyeshadow but you can use it as a highlighter and it's even safe to apply on your lips the way i use it is i just like to do a little bit in the middle of my eye i used to do the inner corners and sometimes i still do but just like the center i just dab it on right there it just brightens up my entire eyeball. I don't know how to explain it. And it's so subtle. And it's like, if I don't do it in the mornings, it's, I notice it. It's an instant eye lift. It instantly brings some life back into my eyes. So I don't look like I've stayed up until 3 a.m. watching K-dramas. And the best part is, it's not just a cosmetic product. It also contains natural emollients like macadamia and meadow foam seed oils, which hydrate your skin and smooth out any lines left over from sleeping. It's an amazing product that even my mom got hooked on, but honestly, every product from Thrive is really high quality. Thrive formulates their products as 100% vegan, cruelty-free, with zero parabens, sulfates, or phthalates, and they're just amazing as a company overall, because for every product purchased from Thrive, they donate funds to help important social causes like domestic abuse, social justice, LGBTQ+, and many more. So when you support Thrive, you're directly supporting all of these communities, and you're gonna look great while you do it. Refresh your everyday look with Thrive Cosmetics, luxury beauty that gives back. Right now, you can get an exclusive 10% off your first order at thrivecosmetics.com slash bake. That's thrivecosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash bake for 10% off your first order. Put it in. What? The next movie. Put it in the DVD player. Ava is shaking, trying to get a walk to remember into the player. She just wants to run home, but instead she sticks it out. Literally, she puts pillows between them and tries to act casual. Nothing weird. And Alex makes a mental reminder to kill Josh when he gets back because now he is carrying Josh's little sister up the stairs. She fell asleep during the bizarre movie marathon and it's pouring rain so he can't walk her back to her house he doesn't want her to sleep on the couch because it's not good for her back and considering he never has guests he doesn't have a guest bedroom or a guest bed so he places ava on his bed and you would think that he's now going to go sleep on the couch right no but that would hurt his back so he just lays right next to ava and watches her sleep apparently she did not wake up while he carried her up the stairs I think she's been drugged. <laughs> I have my speculations. My theories allegedly don't sue me. I feel like she's been drugged because I feel like I would have woken up if I fell asleep in someone's home and then yeah. I, they're transporting me up the stairs. Alex tried to ignore the fact that her skin is smoother than silk. And he's very concerned because somewhere along the way, he stopped seeing Ava as Josh's little sister and more as a woman, a beautiful, pure hearted, but feisty woman who might kill him one day. Alex regrets letting her in earlier. He should have just gone to dinner with Madeline. It was on his schedule, but honestly, that would have been miserable too. Madeline Haas is one of the girls on his rotation. She's a pain in the ass to be around, but she quote, looks like a star. This is why I don't like men's pov you know what i mean <laughs> i don't i i've never sat in my seat and looked at a man and went 
I wish I knew what was going on in his mind. Because once I feel like I know 1%, I'm like, I don't want to know anything more, okay? But outside of the bedroom, Madeline is just a miserable time. The only reason he would agree to any of these dates is because he knows that she doesn't see it as an emotional connection. She sees it as networking. It's social credit. She's a socialite. For her to be seen out eating dinner with DC's most eligible bachelor, she will laugh and brush his arm and act like they're dating when they're not and she knows it he's stroking her ego she's stroking his you yeah yeah you get it okay madeline house would never fall in love with alex volkov that's the only reason it worked you know she only loves herself and status symbols that's it but she was getting annoying and he knew that when he called her to cancel and she started freaking out about it that's when he knew it's time to kick her out the rotation madeline should never think that she can get mad at alex he doesn't know her anything Madeline is clearly mistaken. They are nothing. She has nothing to him. And if she forgets that, she's no longer welcome in his bed. Alex crawls into bed next to Ava and he tries to ignore the presence of a hot, warm female body next to him. No, literally hot, burning up at this point because Ava has a nightly secret that only her closest friends know about. She has night terrors. She wakes up screaming in the middle of the night and the night terrors are always the only one singular memory that she has of her childhood is that she drowned in a lake behind her uh, family's house. (laughs) Wait, so she drowned in the lake? Yeah, but they saved her. Okay. So she didn't die. But he's also scared of water. No, only Ava is. Oh, Ava is. Yeah, he, he, he can, he's Michael Phelps. He's perfect at everything (laughs) he's the best (laughs) okay so she has that one nightmare of her drowning over and over and every single morning she wakes up screaming drenched in sweat at 4 44 a.m which she's half chinese or full chinese i'm not sure but you know four 444 that's what i'm saying that's death 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 Death, that's triple death that's triple homicide in her nightmare that's crazy so yeah i mean it's a lot and then alex hears her screaming that night he's jumping out of bed grabbing the gun because he thinks there's an intruder a home (laughs) invader he hears ava screaming no stop help me please in a few seconds the lights are on alex has his gun ready to kill whoever but when he looks around nobody's there ava's just tossing and turning in bed she's screaming help it sounds like she's choking It's the exorcist, okay? (laughs) No matter how much you desperately want someone to be out of the painful dream, when somebody is having night terrors, you don't just wake them up. It's best to let it pass. Really? That's what he said. Oh. And he has an IQ of 160, so are you going to (laughs) argue? Okay. (laughs) Now, you cannot wake them up, okay? Alex knows this. He's been there. He waits. He watches Ava thrash around for 30 minutes straight before she slowly calms down and falls back into a peaceful slumber. Only then could Alex fall asleep. Not that he was fighting sleep to begin with. He has insomnia, so he only sleeps two to three hours per night. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. You know, world domination, okay? Ava wakes up the next morning feeling the soft sheets and the... just so good and what is the scent it's like spicy it's it's like woody she rolls over onto the bed smiles with her eyes closed and then the realization hits her her bed is not this big she opens one eye looks around and the whole room is different then she opens up another eye and sees a man staring down at her and not just any man that man is alex volkoff he cocks his head looks down not at her face but down She follows his gaze, and oh my god, her hand is holding his wee-wee. I don't know how that happened. What the fuck? (laughs) Wait, he's still in bed? Yeah. And she's grabbing onto it? I don't know if it's like a gorilla grip, (laughs) like gorilla glue grip, okay? But I think it's, uh, it's like there. Okay. And naturally, what's next? It's like, it's hard. (laughs) (laughs) She freezes instead of freaking out. She freezes with her hand still there. If you could remove your hand from my dick, unless you have other plans for it. Ava scrambles out of bed now. What, what, What happened last night? Oh my God. Ava starts running her hands through her hair. Shit, shit, shit. This is Josh's best friend. 
Nothing happened. You fell asleep during the dog movie and it was raining, so you slept up here. What else could have happened, Sunshine? Don't call me that. Why not? It's not my name. That's what they call nicknames. I don't think we're close enough for nicknames. Alex is staring at her amused, but all Ava wants to do is find the biggest crater on the face of the earth and crawl into it. She rushes to grab her things and runs out of the house and immediately goes to report it to her friends. Bridget's bodyguard, because she's a princess, remember? She's got a bodyguard following her everywhere, glances at the girls when she shouts, You touched his dick? It's not a very princessy word, Bridget. Oh my god. How was it? Oh god, I'm not gonna go there. It felt like... Anybody's anyway, the point is the movies did not make him sad. Operation Sadness is a fail. He did not shed a single tear. He told me, don't cry, it's fiction. So the girls decide the next phase of their plan is going to be a bit easier. Disgust. If he can't feel sadness, at least he can feel disgust, no? This part of the plan is easier. Ava bakes him another batch of cookies, but instead of red velvet this time, she bakes in garlic, asparagus, and raisins mixed with sugar. Operation Disgust? Also a fail. Alex ate it, made no reaction on his face. (laughs) So what do you think? You baked these. You baked the red velvet cookies, and then you baked these. Yep. They're fine. Disgust failed. They knew it failed because Ava tried one out and almost threw up. They were really bad. Then it's time for Operation Emotion Phase Happiness. What makes people happy? That's the multi-million dollar question. Literally, he's got millions of dollars. What else could he possibly need? Jules suggests a blowjob. Because of course she does. But Ava is not willing to sacrifice her soul for this experiment. Instead, Ava settles on a picnic, which should have been Operation Annoyed instead because that's how Alex was the entire time, just sitting there looking mildly concerned for Ava's mental health that she would enjoy such a horrid activity. The grass is soaked with dog urine. You do know that, right? That was a failure, so the operation phase, fear, was next. The girls could not come up with a single thing that he would be scared of. They thought maybe they could pretend to rob him at knife point, but knowing his shredded body and his hitman fighting skills, he would likely have killed them first. So that was moot point, which meant that the whole operation, sadness, disgust, happiness, fear, gone out the window. I don't know what this plot was for. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what's going on? Genuinely, I don't know what group of 22-year-olds be plotting like this. (laughs) What is going on right now? He felt none of those things, just mild irritation and annoyance at all times. So Operation Emotion, gone. The girls are ranting about how big of a fail their entire operation is when... Ava, of the voice sends a chill down Ava's back. Liam, again. Normally, he's the definition of trust fund baby frat boy, but today, he looks rough. Like he wasn't the one to be caught porking a strange blonde girl that night, that he claimed he was too sick to come over to Ava's house, so Ava went over to bring him chicken soup, and she wanted him to eat chicken soup and not see his chicken bone in another woman, you know what I mean? That's why they broke up. Can we talk? His breath reeks of alcohol. I'm good, but thanks. Please. Five minutes, that's all you get. Ava's friend looks concerned that she's even willing to give him the time of day, but Ava truly has no intention of getting back with this guy. She just feels like if she hears him out, it's going to be easier and faster to give him the closure that he clearly needs to move on and honestly just leave her the fork alone. When they're outside alone, give me another chance. What? I'm sorry, I'm not doing that. Come on, I get it, you're pissed. But you made me do this for months. You've punished me, okay? I get the message. I'm sorry, the message is we're done. I'm not punishing you. I'm done with you. We're never getting back together. For the first time, Liam loses his cool, or at least first time that Ava's seen. He's coming towards her. Why, you got a new man or some shit? What? Fuck you, you're the one that cheated. Ava's about to storm off, but he grabs her wrist hard. Let go of me. Who are you fucking, huh? Ava realizes as she's staring into his eyes, not only is he drunk, but he's high too. It's none of your freaking business. And with that, Ava knees him in the balls and runs off. And she can hear him screaming behind her. F***ing bitch. She runs back into the coffee shop and her girlfriends are now running out with the bodyguard to, I don't know, kill him, I guess. But he scurried away holding his little testes. That weekend was the night of one of DC's biggest charity galas. And of course, Alex is in attendance, more so out of obligation than anything, but at least he can try to pretend to have fun in judging the shit out of everybody, including Colton, higher up in major software company, heavily invested in lobbying the government. Let's be real, Colton is a nobody to Alex, but his dad is high up in the FBI, so he keeps Colton around and smirks at his shitty jokes. 
Colton's droning on and on about his new work revelations when he stops mid-sentence, mouth is hanging open, and he's staring at the entrance. Alex don't, looks over uninterested when he sees her. Don't Colton's tell me. like, holy shit. No. Who is that girl? She's fucking hot. Ava? Yeah. I've Why? never seen her before in DC. It is Ava Chen <laughs> wearing a liquid gold shimmering gown. It's just draping over her, hugging her every curve, <laughs> exposing her smooth shoulders, swan-like neck, her dark eyes, red lips, all smiles, completely oblivious to the fact that every disgusting man in the room wants to take her home tonight. Well, not home. Most of them want to take her to a hotel because most of them are married. She's like a little Bambi in a room full of wolves. <laughs> Alex realizes he's gripping his champagne glass a little too hard. What the hell is she doing here? Wearing that kind of dress? Alex starts making his way over to Ava. Eyes locked in, ready to give her a mouthful of staying out of trouble when the perfume infiltrates his nostrils. And it's so very clear who it is. He looks down. It's Madeline Haas. Alex, where have you been? You haven't been answering my calls. Busy. He tries to step aside, but she stops him and runs a finger down his arm. You still need to make it up to me for canceling on me for dinner? I don't have to do anything. I think we're done here. What? Are you breaking up with me right now? No, we were never together. So no, I'm not breaking up with you. Besides, that congressman over there looks quite interested. Perhaps he can help your father's business. Why don't you slither over there? What? I'm not some girl you can just pimp out when you're done. I'm Madeline Haas. Did you forget? Alex threatens to ruin her and her whole family's business if she doesn't back off off of him, okay? He's got no time for this bullshit. He has a girl he's got to track down. By the time that he leaves Madeline, seething, he sees it too late. Colton and Ava are dancing to the music, swaying. Colton's hands are inching lower and lower on Ava's hips, and she's laughing. He's not even funny. Something funny? Ava looks shocked to see Alex interrupt. I mean, of course he'd be here, but like what? On the other hand, Colton does not look shocked or impressed. He looks confused. Why is Alex messing with his chances right now? Why is he cockadoodle blocking? Just telling her it's a joke. I can catch up with you later, Alex. We're kind of in the middle of... Actually, you're not in the middle of anything. So Colton is... Is Colton like above Alex? Or no. they're just like kind of in the Colton similar... is below Alex. Oh, yeah. It's just because that's his daddy is. Yeah, his daddy's high up in the FBI. And why does he care about FBI? You'll see. <laughs> oh. Alex moves in to swoop Ava away from Colton and has his hands on her hips now. He doesn't even look at Colton. He knows he needs to fix it, though. You have to leave, Colton. Business calls. But we'll get lunch next week at the Valhalla. Alex just gave Colton the networking ticket of a lifetime. I think only like 100 non-guests are allowed in Valhalla every single year. Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. See you guys later. Good night. Colton scurries off, but Ava looks pissed. That was my dance partner. Not anymore. Besides, he's a slime ball, and you should stay away from him if you know what's good for you. What do you know what's good for me? You don't even know me. They're swaying to the music, staring at each other. Why don't you find out? Okay, my favorite color, yellow. My favorite ice cream, mint chocolate chip. Favorite season, you tell everyone it's summer, but secretly winter fascinates you. It's cold, it's scary, but it's everything you fear. And somehow that fear makes you feel even more alive. Why don't you try something harder? Okay, what do I want in life? You want love. <laughs> Sorry. Deep, unconditional love. You want it so badly, you're willing to say yes to anything. One more favor, one more kind gesture. You're so desperate for someone to love you, you'd be willing to whore yourself out. In that moment, dancing with Ava, Alex realizes what he admires most about Ava is what he hates most about her. Darkness craves light, and once it gets it, it wants to destroy it. Alex feels in that moment nothing was more clear than the fact that he wants to fork her right then and there. He says, I hated how much I wanted her, and I hated that she wasn't smart enough to run away from me while she still had the chance. Though let's be honest, it was already too late. She was mine. She just didn't know it yet. Ava stares up at him. Isn't that what you want? Absurd. You must have me confused, sunshine. You don't fool me, Alex. You want everyone to think that you have no soul, no heart, but you have a golden heart, just like mine. It's just encased in a thick layer of ice. What did I tell you about humanizing me? I'm not humanizing you. I'm telling you the truth. Go home. You shouldn't be here. 
I'll go home when I want to. And with that, Ava pulls away and disappears into the crowd. And the rest of the night, Alex makes an effort to not look at Ava, but he always tries to keep her somewhere in the line of sight until she leaves. Probably went home for the night, which speaking of, it's time for Alex to go home too. He makes his way over to the coat check when he hears, get off of me. What the fuck? He slams open the coat check door and there Liam is pushing Ava up against the wall with her wrist up, pinned over her head. You told me you weren't seeing anyone new. His words are slurring. He's drunk. I saw you dancing with him. You're insane. Let me go. Or do you want me to kick you in the balls again? I told you I love you. Why can't you just love me back? I know you still have feelings for me deep down. You have three seconds to get off of me or so help me, Liam. I will... And Ava pushes her head back and headbutts him straight in the head. There's blood gushing out of his head and the pleading turns to anger. You fucking bitch, you broke my nose. But before he can hit Ava, Alex grabs him, throws him onto the ground and starts punching him. That's for calling her a That's for holding her up against the wall. That's for cheating on her. He's just going in. He loses track of how many times he's punched Liam, but it's enough to knock him nearly unconscious. And he's just laying there in a pool of his own blood. Alex, stop. You're going to kill him, please. <laughs> Alex finally rips himself off of Yo. Liam and threatens his entire future and career if he does anything. And the two of them walk away. In the car on the way home, Alex convinces Ava to take self-defense courses and she's debating it. And she tries to reassure him that she's fine. She's just shaken up, but everything's good. But then she has a full-blown panic attack in the car. Not just any panic attack, but like, you know, her nightmare, it's about her drowning. Mm Mm-hmm. She's envisioning it, but she's awake. Like, this has never happened before, okay? When she snaps out of it, she realizes Alex is parked on the side of the road and his face is a mixture of concern for her, but also just, like, pure anger and hatred. And this is where the book started to lose me because they just met. I feel like they just met. There's nothing to indicate that they have a solidified foundation for a relationship. And she says, he looks like he wants to burn the world down at seeing me hurt. She has to remind herself, don't be so naive. Of course he wants to protect her. He promised Josh he would. It's not because he cares about her. But he says, I will destroy Liam. I will destroy and ruin everything he has, his entire family, all of them, until they are nothing but a pile of ashes at your feet. Damn. He's kind of good with his words. (laughs) And she's like, no, it's not because of Liam. It's just a nightmare. I don't want to talk about it. Let's go eat. So he takes her to a fast food restaurant and they show up in their black tie attire. Of course they do. And they're munching on fries. And suddenly Ava is ready to talk about it. She's just like me. Like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Two French fries. Four minutes later, I'm talking about it. (laughs) What? (laughs) Ava tells Alex how her mom... She was going through a lot during the divorce with her father and her mom had some sort of breakdown and tried to kill Ava by pushing her into the lake. I'm laughing because it's so unhinged. Her mom knew that she couldn't swim and the only reason that Ava is alive today is because her dad dove into the water and dragged her out. Soon after that, Ava's mom self-exited. But things were just never the same. Ava's mom tried to kill her. Ava's dad never gives her attention. Even her own parents, the people who are supposed to love her unconditionally. And maybe it's her fault. Maybe if she was a better daughter to both stop. You don't work to get people to love you. Love isn't earned, it's given. What happened to you not believing in love? I don't. But I see the value in it. It's like money. The worth is determined by those who seek it. And you obviously do. So cynical. In between bites of fries, Ava strikes a deal with Alex. She will take self-defense classes so long as he lets her do a photo shoot, a portrait shoot with him as the subject. And he agrees. So this photo shoot is like a cesspool of sexual tension. They want to clearly rip each other's clothes off using their two front teeth, but neither of them want to admit to it. Ava tries to make him admit in the photo shoot, and he... Alex isn't having it. If I wanted you, I would have taken you, Ava. Well, maybe you're too scared to. Alex leans <laughs> That's in crazy. and starts tracing his finger down her shoulder, getting closer and closer to her big titties. <laughs> I don't know how big they are. Is that what you want? What? No. Finish. What? The photo shoot, Ava. Finish the photo shoot. Right. The photo shoot. They sit in silence while Ava snaps pictures. And when they're done, he walks out with his coat without a single goodbye, which would have gotten Ava all up in her feelings but she's too busy looking through the pictures. In most of them, Alex looks bored or agitated, what's new? But there's one where it looks like he forgot to control his facial emotions and she snapped a picture and he is looking at Ava 
with desire. He wants her. <laughs> and she has confirmation now. And for uh, some reason, she can't shake this feeling that this is going to change her life. What's going to change her life? <laughs> Alex, duh. Uh, <laughs> They're going to do it, duh. And that's where I leave you with part one. Guys, this is not going to be a four-parter because this is also not a, like a 700-page book. It's a 350-page book. It's going to be a two-parter. Part two gets crazy. A lot of people get murdered. Oh, is it better? It's better. Really? This is like the setup. Oh. The setup. So let me know your thoughts. Did you guys read this book? Did you love it? Did you read the whole series? Because I think there's a book for each of the best friends. Jules, Stella, Bridget. What do you mean? I think Bridget starts f***ing her bodyguard. Oh. Yeah. Oh, they're all, oh, they all have a... Mm-hmm. Oh. So what Here, about so there's the pr- pr- princess is the main character. I think she starts f- her bodyguard. Uh-huh. I think Jules is gonna get with Josh. Is my feeling. I don't know anything about the other books. And then what's the other girl? Stella, the influencer. Oh, influencer. Yeah. Oh, I think she gets with her landlord. <laughs> but <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ah!